Hello. Another video about historical context on Irish neutrality. So let's get right into it. First thing I have to mention about the Great War. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated on June 28 in Sarajevo. A month later, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, who they felt was behind the assassination. The Russian Empire and France declared war on the Austrian-Hungarian kingdoms. But the Austrian-Hungarian ally, the German Empire, that backed them up and declared war on the Russian Empire and France. But where was Britain? Well, they were watching. Why were they watching? Because they didn't want to get involved. Until the German Empire invaded Belgium, then Britain got involved because of the Treaty of London 1839. All major European powers recognized the sovereignty and neutrality of Belgium. The German Empire broke the treaty, even though at the time in 1839 it was the Kingdom of Prussia. Anyway, how about Ireland? The Irish public was all in support of the war against the German Empire because of Belgium sovereignty and neutrality being violated. And also stories that were coming out of Belgium, which helped the British propaganda. Now, John Redman, leader of the Irish Parliamentarian Party, which was pro-home rule and was a dominant Irish Nationalist Party until the 19 elections when another party became dominant, known as Sinn Féin. But that is for another story. So John Redman, he was using this war to promote Irish men to sign up in the British Army to have English MPs recognize the great Irish service and the Irish sacrifice in this war. Two, have English MPs in support of home rule. And if home rule goes through this time, there was three home rule built. The Irish Parliament will come back. But there's one thing, the Irish volunteers, you needed to convince the Irish volunteers to support, basically sign up, wear the British Crown Forces uniform, go out and fight. Now, he did a speech in Woodenbridge in County Wexford, 20th September, and he managed to convince 170 to 175,000 Irish volunteers to sign up and fight in the war, while 11,000 or 13,500 they didn't. So the Irish volunteers leader, Owen McNeil, days later, with his own speech. Mr. Redmond addressing a body of Irish volunteers last Sunday has now announced for the Irish volunteers a policy and program fundamentally at variance with their own published and accepted aims and pledges. He has declared it to be the duty of the Irish volunteers to take forward service under a government which is not Irish. He has made his announcement without consulting the provisional committee, the volunteers themselves, or the people of Ireland, to whose service alone they are devoted. And after that speech, Owen McNeil called for Irish neutrality. But 
two weeks before Orrin McNeil's own speech on the 9th of September in the library of the offices of the Gaelic League in Palmer Street, the idea of the Irish Neutrality League originated in a conference by an IRB member, Owen Kennedy, and was attended by eight future leaders of the 1916 Raisin, like James Conley and Patrick Pierce. And also another person was in attendance, Arthur Griffith, leader of the Sinn Féin Party. On the 5th of October, two Sinn Féin members, Sean T. O'Kelly and Sean Milroy, circulated a document. And the purpose of it, of the Irish Neutrality League, and to define Ireland's attitude towards the war. Now, the inaugural meeting of the Irish Neutrality League was the 12th of October 1914, and James Conley was the League's President. The League held a few public lectures and had a handful of subscribers, but the League itself didn't really take off to convince the Irish public for Irish neutrality. Because public perception was still in favour of the war. But most of the Irish public perception and Irish nationalists were pro-war. After all, the Somme and Yibs haven't happened yet. But public perception will change in the conscription crisis in 1918. And that is next week's video. So, slarn.